Good evening and welcome to St. John in the Wilderness Church. We are so pleased that you chose to spend the evening with us. It is Saturday, December 5th, uh, and tomorrow, Sunday, will be the second Sunday in the season of Advent. So welcome, um, and we will take a moment to still our hearts and our minds to prepare to worship um, the living God. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation, give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. gracious to your land, O God. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people and blotted out their sin. Show us your mercy, O God, and grant us your salvation. Show us your mercy, O God, and grant us your I will listen to what the Most High God is saying, for God is speaking peace to the faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to God. Truly, salvation is very near to those who fear that glory may dwell in our land. Show us your mercy, O God, and grant us your salvation. Show Mercy and truth have met. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. Truth springs up from the earth. Justice looks down from heaven. Show us your mercy, O God, and grant us your salvation. Show The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And the people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel hair and a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Greetings to all who are listening to this lesson about from First Mark verses one through eight, which is really a lesson about humility. 
Let us proceed. Who would you say was the greatest person ever born? If you are a Christian, you might say, why, Jesus Christ, of course. But now suppose Jesus himself were asked the question, what do you think he would say? You might be surprised to know that Jesus did once attribute that distinction of greatness to a certain person. We read in Luke that Jesus told his disciples, I tell you, among those born of women, there is no one greater than John. Yet the one who is the least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. Now, John the baptizer, the namesake of our own parish, was an amazingly popular figure. Everybody in Jerusalem and people from all over the Judean countryside went out to listen to him preach. But they didn't just listen. They responded. They confessed their sins and were baptized. Not only was John popular, he was also very successful. But for all his popularity and success, though, John was strikingly different from the average person. As we have seen in our own experience, people often respond to popularity and success with a certain degree of pride and swagger. But from the beginning, John was different. In our daily experiences these days, we may hear or see the slogan, It's not about me. That was the root of John's message from the beginning. He preached about someone else, someone who would come after him, whose sandals John did not consider himself worthy to untie. John wasn't interested in the limelight. He wasn't interested in the praise or admiration from others. He was interested in preparing the way for someone else. He didn't let personal ambition get in the way of doing his job well. This is something we all struggle with, and it is normal to want to be successful so we can care for ourselves and our families, along with other things we feel are essential. But for John the Baptist, and even us these days, there is much more to Christian life than ourselves. In our lesson today, we are reminded about John being a baptizer. Among the preparations he made for the coming of Christ was the task of preaching a baptism of repentance and for the, for the forgiveness of sins. It is into this kind of baptism that the people listening to him entered. It is the same for us today. When we admit we are sinners, we lay aside our human pride and confess the truth. It is important that we realize that we are not making that confession blindly, but instead we are making it in the light of the revealed knowledge that God loves us immeasurably and that he has made atonement for us in Jesus Christ. In other words, because God has revealed to us that he is for us, we are free in Christ both to fearlessly confess our sinfulness before God and free to accept God's gift of atonement and his new creation of us in his son, Jesus Christ. Now with the confession of our sinfulness is our recognition that we need God's forgiveness. We admit that we have sinned and have betrayed God's love, and we place ourselves at his mercy. Having now renounced our sins and pledged faithful obedience. But actually becoming that new person, entering that new life, turning over that new leaf, is another question entirely. When we try to do that, we find ourselves failing, fighting our old ways and easily falling into, falling into despair. That is, unless we trust God to be who he really is for us in Jesus Christ. In Christ we are a new creation, and we are set free. 
God has freed us to be the new, redeemed, healed, and complete persons he has made us to be in Christ. We can use that gift of freedom to hear and celebrate our Heavenly Father. Or we, or we can reject it and continue to live as though God has not made us his covenant partner. As though he had not made us the beloved recipients of his overflowing grace in Christ. No longer must we live in spiritual bondage, struggling in vain to grasp here and there a little respect, dignity, security, and love in this very challenging time. No longer must everything in life be about us and our anxieties about not getting all the things we think we need. No longer must we be struck so hard with the issues we all face given this pandemic if we travel this road with Christ Jesus. The Holy Spirit gives us ears to hear God's invitation and accept his protective love and provide uh, for us powerful new life in him. In that new life provided by the Holy Spirit, we are free to choose to be the person in Christ God has already chosen us to be. Now all this repenting, Believing and passing through the waters of baptism have meaning only because God gives it meaning. Because Jesus took the indescribable action of becoming one of us, living sinlessly as one of us, dying on the cross as one of us, being resurrected as one of us, ascending to and being received by the Father as one of us. Does any of this make any sense at all? God in his divine freedom to be who he wants to be for our sakes gives us the ability to understand through our faith. The good news for all of us is that we are saved by God's coming to us in the person of Jesus Christ. Now John's ministry was a ministry of humility. Baptism is an expression of humility. The Son of God humbled himself to become one of us through his baptism by John for our sakes. And the new life in Christ that is given to us by our Creator and Redeemer is a life of humility. It's not about us. If it were about us, what would we do? How can we heal our own pasts, present, and futures? How can we redeem our faults, sins, betrayals, and rebellion? How can we secure our future or the future of those we care about? No, thank God, it's not about us. It's all about Jesus Christ, the Son of God, incarnate in the flesh, for our sakes. He is the one who heals our personal history, redeems our every dark sin, secures our futures, and gives us deep peace and rest. Praise be to God that we can drop all our airs of superiority and the burden of human shame, humble ourselves before the mighty hand of God, and especially during this time, difficult time, be secure in the knowledge that God is truly our all in all. Alleluia and Amen. I'm just a
Pray with me for our prayers of the people today. In hushed anticipation of your coming, bring your people your most gracious comfort and the strength to be heralds of glad tidings, that we might be ready for your coming and eager to pray. We pray to you, Lord, saying, Hear our prayer. O oh God, in days to come, the mountains of your house will be established, and your joy shall reign. We pray for the church, especially St. John in the wilderness, that you might teach us your ways, and that we might walk in your paths. Come, Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. In your time, O oh Lord, the valleys shall be lifted up, the mountains and hills shall be made low, and the rough places will become a plain. 
We pray for your, our nation and all nations that your peace would be manifest in every corner of the earth. Come, Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. In your kingdom, O Lord, you bring an ending comfort and you feed your flock like a shepherd and gather the lambs into your arms. We pray for the sick, the suffering, and those in distress of any kind, especially those we pray with at St. John and those we name in our hearts, that you would heal all injuries, comfort all grief, and settle all wrongs. Come, Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. Your great works of redemption, O God, span the ages. We pray that we pray for those who rejoice this week as they celebrate their birthdays and other special events, that they might obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing might flee away. Come, Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. In the fullness of time, O God, you sent your Son to be born of our sister Mary, and his name was Emmanuel, God with us. We thank you for your presence with us, and we pray that you might be always present with those whom we love, but see no longer. Come, Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. Come among us, O God, and hear our prayers, so that when your Son, Jesus, comes among us with great might and in manger mild, we might recognize his face and, the, and his voice and come to adore him. Amen. A few announcements before we let you go. The first is that um, tomorrow from 1115 to 1145, if you would like to receive uh, the sacrament, uh, we will be on First Street uh, distributing, it's, we call it drive up communion. So you drive through with your car and we will be out there um, administering the sacrament. It's a very short two minute or less service. It's always good to see uh, people. And if that's something that is important to you, if you're missing receiving the, the body of Christ, then please do join us uh, for that. Secondly, we have a number of outreach um, uh, things that are going on right now. Solid Ground, which is a ministry here in White Bear, they are gathering Christmas gifts right now. And so um, we encourage you to purchase a gift, uh, wrap it up, and then bring it to the church, and we'll get it to Solid Ground. We're also collecting baking supplies for the White Bear Area Food Shelf. And uh, so if you would like to donate some baking supplies, you can bring those by the church and just leave them in the um, entry of the church. Uh, adult formation, we have just begun a couple of new offerings. The first is on Sunday evening at seven o'clock and that's our Topics Unlimited track. And for the next three weeks, I think it is, we will be uh, talking about dementia through a spiritual lens. And then on Wednesday, starting at 6.45 to about 7.45, that is our Transformed by the Word Bible study. And we've started a new series entitled Advent and the Coming Christ. So uh, keep those in mind. Um, also, I just want to remind you that almost every day during the week, we have opportunities for worship. Um, on Mondays and Fridays, we do Compline at 8.30 in the evening. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we do morning prayer at 8 o'clock in the morning. And the links to all of those worship opportunities and all of the study 
um, the adult formation study opportunities and children and youth, and young adult formation um, opportunities. All of those links on, are on our website and the website is stjohnwilderness.org. So we encourage you to check that out and to join us for some of, some of those things. And a final blessing, may the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. God bless. Prepare the way, O Zion, your Christ is drawing near. Let every hill and valley a level way appear. Great wonder comes in glory, for told in sacred story. O blessed is Christ. Till we meet again.
Forget.